This week in the markets, a review of quarter one of 2024. It's been quite an interesting year so far. We started talking about global conflicts effects on commodity prices. And since we've transitioned to disease, here's a rundown of the highlights so far. The beginning of quarter one 2024 saw much speculation on what to expect in the spring. Prices were on the downward slope and thoughts were of consolidating current supplies and determining both what the Brazilian harvest would give us and how supplies would look from Russia and Ukraine. Our, our spring weather and our summer weather is going to be the biggest mover. I think you've got to watch world problems out there. You've got the war in the Middle East. You've got the war between Russia and Ukraine. That doesn't seem to be letting up anytime soon. Are they going to stop exports out of Ukraine? If exports out of Ukraine stop in corn and wheat, then we can jump this market. Uh, if they continue to export, uh, then they've got plenty of wheat. The Russians have got plenty of wheat. Uh, the Ukrainians have got corn to sell, so that'll keep a damper on it. February saw row crops continue to fall in price, bolstered by Brazilian harvest and decent supply globally. Cotton the outlier here, rising in price due to less supply because of fewer harvested acres in recent years, and livestock also seeing a slight rally. You know, we have to start somewhere. We're at three-year lows. Uh, that's the problem with corn and wheat. We're at three-year lows, and everybody for the last year has been like, okay, is the low end, is the low end, is the low end, and uh, it's just been very, very difficult and um, so, yeah, I think if there is a rally, it could come from something in Europe. Look, the feeder cattle market is trying to serve a purpose, and it wants more animals, right? And it's going to, I think it really will continue to have more upside potential until it gets what it wants. Right now, it's all about the Brazilian harvest. And uh, right now, the beans are in that 1150, 1160, 1170 area. And, and historically, in the last 20 years, beans just don't trade in the 11s very often. You know, they're there very few times, and it's either from 10 up to 12 very quickly or from 12 down to 10 very quickly. So uh, with Brazil only 25% harvested right now, I think there could be potentially some more harvest pressure. Through March, we saw row crop prices continue to rise with the exception of corn, which fell only slightly. That told us supplies were there, but demand not so much. In livestock, lean hogs seeing a rally while cattle prices fairly steady, although small herd size still an issue, not helped by Texas wildfires that devastated many ranchers. Uh, a lot of things are going on here. I think that the funds are covering shorts, but at the same time, producers, uh, you know, have quite a bit of corn on the other side of those shorts. So, yeah, I mean, there's no doubt whenever you reverse the market and selling actually showed up, uh, that it gave people a little bit of, oh, firepower, if you will, to step in and buy this thing. The Brazilian crop, the USDA says 155. I say nonsense. I don't think you can have so many Brazilian people, boots on the ground right there, coming up with estimates from you know, 140 to 148, 149 in that range, some even lower than that, and expect that the 155 is going to hold. Go, go try to buy feeders right now. I know what the market's doing on the board, but the, in the real world, feeders are hard to get your hands on. Uh, when you look at fats, there, there's 190s out there, uh, 188s, 190s. Bottom line is people are out there hunting, trying to get a hold of fats. Uh, We've we got the smallest cattle herd that we've had in decades. I mean, the, the last five, six years have been really tough. Uh, in terms of both cattle prices and input prices. We also had the severe drought last year that forced a lot of producers to make some tough liquidation decisions. Uh, so yeah, the herd is smaller. Uh, and so there's, there's producers that, that still have cattle are back to the point to where the, the prices are reflecting that, that smaller herd, those tighter supplies, and hopefully encouraging uh, some expansion sometime in the near future. April saw a big story drop, avian influenza, or HPAI, seemingly transmissing from cattle to humans. This caused a big price drop in cattle meat due to concerns over safety, and a slight rally in pork as a result. Meanwhile, row crops mixed with wheat and corn moving up, while soybeans and cotton moving down bolstered by the USDA annual acreage report. Acreage has come up on cotton. Uh, cotton prices have had a nice little rally through the winter. It's back over 82 cents or so last uh, last few weeks, pushing 84 cents. And kind of as we talked about with these lower corn prices, that has made cotton a pretty more attractive crop from a profitability standpoint for many producers. I mean, when I was traveling around this winter, I heard a lot more cotton folks talking about planting cotton this year compared to corn.
Yeah, I think you're looking at consumer sentiment. Whether or not you agree with everything that's happening with the flu, whether or not we know that, you know, consumption, it's not going to affect consumption. But when you're hearing that story on the nightly news, some people are going to be like, mm, I'm out. I'm not going to be buying that product for a while. Part of it was the HPAI discussion or, or you know, when the case was found of HPAI and dairy cattle. Um, I do think that bled over into beef cattle markets a little bit as well, at least the concern for, for prices. It was kind of hard to disentangle though, because we had some other, you know, we had, we had the planting report that came out uh, showing, you know, that led to some stronger corn prices and stronger corn prices typically push down cattle prices. Uh, we just had a couple different kind of bad news things there for cattle markets that kind of all hit at the same time uh, that put some pressure on, on futures prices. As you can see, quite a bit of news to sink into so far this year. With planting well underway, we'll see how things move forward. And that's it for a deeper look into the markets.